Hey everybody, this is Alan Fine and I'm here with Brad Tolkien who's the co-chairman and CEO of World Travel Holdings which, as you know, is the parent company of Dream Vacations, Cruise One. Brad always gives us the great outlook, the forecast. We're going to do that. We're going to talk about the conference on Norwegian Encore and this is Insider Travel Report. Brad, thank you for talking to us. Absolutely. We love doing this every year, Alan. I Thank know. you. I, know. I appreciate that you are so available every year. So I was thinking about how uh, COVID has made us feel trapped. And when you trap humans and they just want to do whatever they can to, to just break that and feel that they're not trapped. That's my s simple, simple way of saying there's pent up demand. You have an eloquent w way of saying it with numbers. So let's talk about that. Okay. Well, uh, for the last... Um Two and a half years, I've been saying that when this ends, and we did not know when it will end, that we will see the greatest buildup of demand for leisure travel that I have ever witnessed in my 42 and a half years in this industry. And we are seeing it in our numbers. Both crews and non-crews are up over double digits over our best year ever, which was 2019. We don't look at the numbers from 2020 or 2021. And both number or both segments, both cruise and non-cruise, which is mostly for dream vacations and cruise one, resort destinations, all-inclusive destinations in the Caribbean and Mexico. Um, so not only is our transactions or bookings, as we say, up double digits, Alan, but also pricing is up substantially. So what we're saying, well, in that case, we're talking about pent up demand versus recession. It sounds like recession doesn't have a chance. So right now we are not seeing any pullback in the consumer spending money on leisure travel in spite of the challenging economic news that we are hearing on a daily, monthly basis, a daily and monthly basis. So we're not seeing that. But I'd also like to add, Alan, that in my history in the travel business, when we have had recessions, macro negative events, and of course the great re recession of 08 and 09, um, we saw great years. Pricing did come down, but booking volume was substantial. So let's talk about, you had a slide about current stats. Let's talk about that, please. Yes, we shared some current stats specifically for this division. And um, I don't remember the exact numbers now off the top. Well, of I my do. Head. Okay, well, you well, have to. So, so then you please, I'll tell it to you and you'll annotate. Sure. So you said land bookings were up 33%, pricing was up 18% for land. And then we compared that to cruise 23% and cruise pricing up 6%. Yep. So the land numbers are throughout the whole year. Uh, there were no restrictions or shackles imposed by any government authority about people to travel that were, that we're not going on a cruise. Uh, the cruise numbers are since um, the beginning of August when the CDC relaxed its restrictions imposed on the cruise industry and then the cruise lines quickly followed and then aligned their protocols with the rest of the travel economy. So we break down land is all year. The stats I gave you, cruise from August 1. And uh, you guys jumped in. I know that uh, Drew ran a, a land summit, and you really uh, doubled down there, and the, the travel advisors were able to benefit by that. Well, we were blessed um, that in 2014 or 15, don't hold me to the um, exact year, we launched a brand. We just used to have one brand of franchising, Cruise One, very cruise-centric. And uh, in 2014 or 15, we launched Dream Vacations, the franchisees were not forced to switch over to the from a cruise one to a dream vacations. Many did. Many are still on the cruise one brand and sell land, but it allowed us the opportunity of really expanding the portfolio of land products that we offer in our dream vacations and cruise one business. And because the cruise industry was unfortunately and undeservedly hit hard during the pandemic. It gave our franchisees, our Cruise One and Dream Vacations customers, the opportunity to survive without crews while cruising was shut down. Right, right. This almost leads us into the uh, no NCFs uh, discussion because uh, land never had them. 
and uh, but Cruz had him fairly or unfairly. And so um, this isn't something new. I mean, Virgin, uh, GoGo Tours, uh, Viking, they, they don't have them. But uh, there was a big announcement that NCL would no longer have them. Let's talk about what the ripple effect will be. Well, as Frank Del Rio said um, when he reported earnings, is his focus here was he understood that a lot of travel advisors that used to be cruise-centric sold a lot of non-cruise when cruise was shut down for obviously obvious reasons to survive. And I, I, I think he said that their entire team became more familiar with the commission structure that they get from, I'll just use one brand of sandals, which is there's, there's no, no sh- such thing as an NCF, and they get paid even on the taxes and the fees or whatever. One price, one commission, very simple and a very high selling price. So Frank said, really, it's not the other cruise lines that I am going after because I don't want to steal share from them. I want to take back some of the share that I lost to non-cruise vacations. And then the other thing that Frank um, brought up, which I think is uh, very wise in terms of uh, his brand, is Frank has taken a different philosophy. Frank and Harry have taken a different philosophy, and they want a market to fill the ships versus price to fill the ships, and they bundle a lot into the base price. And so what they have done is the no NCF policy, or full commission, I should say, um, on everything but certain fees and taxes, uh, is for bookings 120 plus days out from the book date. And so the reason that Frank explained they're doing this is because if they could put fill the ship further out, then they don't have to discount holding their price up and providing the travel advisor with a much higher commission. And also, there's another caveat. They have to do a little marketing for NCL. They have to do a little marketing. It's not but bad. If, if, no, it's not bad. Uh, that is less of a burden for a franchise organization because Norwegian is allowing the, um, the franchisor, Dream Vacations, Cruise One, as part of WTH. Our marketing will count for the individual franchisee marketing. So it's that, that particular comment, while it's factually true for us too, it's more of a burden for the individual travel agency out there. Okay, so um, now is it true that when, because David Crooks was talking to Todd Hamilton, and it sounded almost as if they were floating this and testing this with Dream Vacations. Is that true? That is true. Uh, we, I don't believe we were the only company, as uh, Harry said this morning, that they tested it with. But they did not allow our direct-to-consumer brands to participate in this test, only the travel advisor community and um, only the franchise community for us, um, at that particular division of World Travel Holdings. And um, what they saw is in an increase in bookings in the 120 day plus arena and that's what they wanted okay so maybe the macro numbers were the same but there was a shift between close in bookings and i'm not saying they were the same i don't know our exact numbers off the top of my head Mm -hmm. but that's what they saw and that's what they wanted to see can we get people booking further out so we can hold the price point up higher and 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 so therefore it was a success and that's why they wanted to roll it out now industry-wide what do you think um what's your scorecard on others following this so um i don't have a scorecard i'm sure everyone crystal ball everyone is looking at it um you know i think that cruise lines without mentioning a specific cruise line that focus on a similar strategy by bundling a lot of 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 the value adds into the base price are more likely to consider it than a cruise line that's focused on uh, getting more people on the ships and letting the onboard revenue fall where the consumer wants it to fall you guys care a lot and it's always come out it's come out in the way you supported the the travel advisors during the pandemic i know you gave loans uh i i know that uh you yourself stopped getting paid you and your brother uh the other top executives took cuts huge cuts 60 percent, i think but what i'm really interested in letting everyone know is how you treated the uh, the rest of the organization well the rest well the entire organization those who worked full-time every employee was asked to take a compensation cut our most senior team took 60 percent cuts initially and uh worked full-time uh then there were a group of employees that we asked not to work full-time to save us some money 
and work um, several days a week, let's call it three days out of the five days a week. And, and we would reinstate as quickly as we could. And the great news is in 2020, late 2021 and into 2022, we did a number of things. One, we reinstated everyone's salary that was working full time. Two, we brought back people that were working part time for the organization and brought them back to full time status. Three is that every year we give people merit raises and bonus opportunities. So the first thing we did is we reinstated merit raises, back merit raises. So the merit raises they did not get in 2020 and 2021. We put a lump sum on the table in, uh, I believe, January of 2022 to make up for those merit raises. And then we had another merit raise at our normal time of the year, which was May of 2022. Then as things even began to improve more, on July 1 of 2022, every dime that was sacrificed by those employees that worked full-time but took a pay cut, every back dime was paid to them. So as if they made their full salary for the years of 2020 and 2021. And then lastly, this year there is a bonus program in place, but we also have put a special bonus on the table. It has nothing to do with the company performance. It's an expression of gratitude. And every employee that is with the company in 2022, greater than six months, we'll get a one-time bonus on March 1 of 2023. So we we know, as Christine Karst of Ama Waterways said at our conference uh, yesterday, Alan, that our most valued asset is our employees, and that's where we first looked when we had the opportunity to express our gratitude for everything they sacrificed during the pandemic. And what I want to say is that that trickles down, and that is uh, <clears throat> your your employees uh, show that uh, uh, they feel that uh, family feeling, and it trickles down, and the travel advisors have it, and I felt it at every conference. And, and that's why I shared it today with the travel advisors, because they do feel part of a family, and they want to, they like hearing that we take care of our employees. So let's now talk about the importance of travel advisors. You were staying, say, stating that today. You've said it all along. There's no change. Well, well, obviously, I believe in the travel advisor because I'm in that business, but we have seen you know, another just step up in the consumer seeking out a professional travel advisor as we got into this pandemic. We have many different business lines uh, at WTH, World Travel Holdings, both direct to the consumer, which are much more substantial in terms of volume, and our travel advisor business, which is Cruise One and Dream Vacations. But what we have seen, and it's been building since the, the beginning of the pandemic, is that the growth in our travel advisor business, the percentage growth, even though it's a smaller part of the business, has been much bigger than the direct-to-consumer model. And simply, Alan, what it tells us is that consumer today wants the comfort and advice uh, that goes with dealing with a professional travel advisor. You closed your talk today with some advice, uh, certain things you wanted to, to get the travel advisors to know. You want to go over them now? Sure. Uh, yeah, I just gave them um, so, several points, business advice, uh, launch and iterate, which means to um, stop the discussion at a certain point of things you're thinking about, get it out into the market. Stop the analysis paralysis. Correct. Stop the analysis paralysis uh, and and then adjust. And so that's the iteration. And I gave them examples that they that could resonate with them. I also told them to fail well. Don't be afraid to, f- to fail and um, just learn from those. And then lastly, um, uh, take risks. And I gave them a perfect example. A year ago, we merged our Cruises Inc. business with our uh, Cruise One and Dream Vacations. You'd had it for a while. It was risky. And it was very, very risky. There were tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars of cruise volume out there that we put on the line to make this adjustment. But we focused, and this is what I, the, the last point in taking risks, we focused not solely on the risks, more on the opportunities. And when we put everything on the whiteboard, Alan, there were more opportunity wins than there were risk losses. And we said, let's go. And you're, and you're reaping the benefits already? or, or Yep, we are reaping the benefits already. So I think we've covered it. I mean, usually at this point, I say we go out to over 109,000 travel advisors. Some of them no dream vacations, cruise ones, and some of them don't. If they want to learn more, where do they go? 
Well, they can go and call us at Dream Vacations and Cruise One. Um, but I just want to give a general statement out to the travel advisor community because I want to end where I started. This is the greatest buildup of travel demand for leisure travel that I have ever seen. The other day I did a town hall, which I just fielded questions, and people asked me, will, be, will there be a wave season? The answer is yes, there'll be a traditional wave season, but we are in a wave season right now. Our business, your, their business, your business is substantial, so buckle up. Thank you for talking to us. Okay, thank you. This is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.